we'll we'll start with the blueprint. Um, obviously, mini camp mandatory mini camp started yesterday, so we'll get to that as soon as we we touch the blueprint really quick. Um, just give me a couple of things that stood out to you. Uh, for me personally, um, one of the things that I liked a lot, and you actually brought. Actually, I won't even step on that. I'll, I'll let you take that because you you mentioned it when we were watching it on last Tuesday when it released. So I'll let you have that. Um, I think the biggest thing that stuck out to me was the fact that um, they they were showing Deontay Johnson and just how he came in, and then they show him and Brad in the office together, and just the way that we kind of were hesitant about Deontay Johnson and him relaying the message that he re- had received from the coaching staff as well as Dave Canales. And I remember when that came out, when that news came out that, you know, he was going to be the primary ex. He was going to be the receiver that – uh, you know, was was the read number one for majority of the plays. We were kind of skeptical and hesitant about that, just from the standpoint of we were questioning the validity of it. Number one, number two, we were like, uh, I don't know. I don't, we don't we don't know if Deontay Johnson is that guy, whatever the case may be. Um, but it seems like the coaching staff really believes in Deontay Johnson and their plans for him. Um, you know, Brad was like, Hey, look, we got big plans for you. We knew we needed to go get an X that could win no matter what. And if you left them one on one and they didn't help, didn't send help, you are the type of player that's going to let them know that they fucked up. So that was that was that was major to see, in my opinion. It's one of the good things about the blueprint. You get to see that behind the scenes look. Um, so you know that that was cool to see. That was dope to see. And again, it's, it's kind of um, it's kind of promising that we feel as though we have that guy in the locker room now. You know, with the the lack of weapons that that Bryce Young had last last year, so I'm interested to see how that plays out. What about does, you? You had that, anything that stood out to you? Does a new episode come out today? Every Tuesday? Uh so just... they're only releasing two episodes, and I don't think they've released an official date for the second episode yet because I, I, it doesn't come out today. Oh well, <clears throat> either way, uh, my couple of takeaways, but my biggest takeaway was I like the idea of having a younger coaching staff. Um, because I feel like they're more hands-on when you see Dave Canales on the field actually, you know, getting in work with the players, being more active, being more hands-on than we've seen in the past with really any other coach. Um, same with the offensive coordinator. He's putting his cleats on, running routes. I think he used to be a receiver, if yes. I'm not mistaken. So yes. he's showing them technique, showing them how it should look. And I think that goes a long way. Um, if you want to get players to buy in, you got to show them as a new coaching staff that you're bought in as well. And I think the best way to do that, obviously they're not suiting up and playing in the game, but at least showing that they actually care about what's going on because they're out on the field, not just telling you to do something, but also going out there demonstrating it, practicing what they preach. So I love to see that. I also love to see the offensive line coach really grilling the offensive lineman. For sure. Um, Making sure that – if they make mistakes, then he's going to let you know. Um, they they had a time where it's, you know, it's time to be fun, time to play games and stuff like that, but they also had that seriousness about them. So let you know that I don't think this is going to be a pushover coaching staff. I think that um, they're going to expect a lot of things out of these, pro, out of these players. They're going to expect improvement. Um, they're going to expect effort, and I think that that's something that you're going to see a lot of this season. So – uh, I think those were the two major takeaways that I had. Fair enough. Do you have anything? Because you kind of came in on the back end. So I don't know if you have anything off the top of your head. If not, that's fine. I'll just comment on something that he said. No, I mean, yeah, you can go ahead and comment on it. I was just going to say that I just like their energy. Like in the coaching staff that I saw, you could yeah. definitely tell there was juice in the building. For sure. And I, th- I think that's really – because you can't get a super descriptive look. I mean, the blueprint is a really cool idea, and it gives you a unique behind-the-curtains type of look. But uh, as far as, like, what it's actually going to be, like, schematically, what the team is going to look like, like, how they're going to play and everything, you can't really tell any of that from a curated video by the Panthers media team that's right. meant to make them look good. Right. But what you can't fake is the funk of that. Like, you can't fake the funk of the energy that they brought, the coaching staff brought. You know, you have a bunch of different personalities that look like they mesh well together. You have Canalis, like, he's bringing the energy. He's kind of like the glue guy. And then you have – um. You got uh, the uh, the OC that Canales gave right. credit to that he said, you know, keeps everything organized and keeps them clean and keeps them on track. And then you still got that hard-nosed football 
you know, grimy type of coach that'll get in your face and yell at you. And we heard that with the offense or with the offensive line coach. For sure. Because that was something that, like, all of us were sitting here and our ears perked up the first time we heard him yell at somebody. Because <laughs> oh, it's like, yeah, that's the type That's the type of energy you need. So, it's, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's cute. It's a nice first step. Yeah, because one thing I want to say before you go, like, just imagine them doing that. Like, they're doing that with the cameras on. So, just imagine how it is with the cameras off. Like, when, they're no, when they know it's not a camera following them around. Like, so I just feel like that speaks to the different level of energy that this coaching staff has versus the last coaching staff. Because really the only person you've seen that with was Deuce. I didn't Very really cool. see that with, like, Frank Wright or I don't even remember who the OC was at the time. Thomas Brown? Yeah, bro. And you ain't really <laughs> see that with him, so. And that it translated, too, into the season because, like, we constantly talked about a lack of effort and a lack of energy. Yep, absolutely. Starts at the top. And, that, and that's another takeaway. Like, you just to kind of – you know, piggyback off of what y'all were saying, that energy to me is different. I mean, obviously, like Tavian mentioned, it is a curated video by the Panthers media team, but it just looks like, it looks like from the outsider's perspective, it looks like in the building, it feels a little bit different just based off of the energy that Canales brings. And that trickles down throughout, you know, throughout the um, coaching staff as a whole, just based off what we were shown with the four or five coaches that they decided to highlight. Um, what was another thing? There was another thing that I wanted to comment on. I'm going. Oh, I love, I love, um, I love the the feeling of togetherness and unity. That's another thing that I feel like we lacked last year. Um, you know, and it started like all of it is is kind of funny and kind of ironic to a certain degree because that kind of started the lack of unity that we experienced last year that we saw last year started during the off season. When we decided to go Bryce over CJ, I have no comment on that. You, you feel however you feel. But as time went on, we realized that that was something in the in-house that was dividing the organization as a whole. You had, you know, X amount of people that wanted Bryce and X amount of people that wanted CJ. And throughout the season, at times, it looked like that's the, the product that was being put on the field, a, a team full of individuals. Yeah, and that's something that we spoke on in the offseason, too, before we they even hired a coach. It was like, you know, at this point, you have to go get someone who was bought in on Bryce to start with and who was going to be bought in on Bryce when they get the coaching job of this team. And I think that you really see that with Dave Canales in the OC. And so that kind of takes away that divide that you've seen last year. So I think that all in all, like, one thing that we – we, or that we won't see going down the stretch of the season is a lack of effort just based on the, you know, the mindset and based on the demeanor and personality that the coaches have and that we've seen them, like, put on tape from that little clip. Yeah, for sure. Did um, did the blueprint change your, your perspective at all on the season as a whole? No, um, because the reason I say that is because I'm sure you can attest to this. Everyone got caught up in – the blueprint hype last year because it was the first time that they did something like that. And so we're like, oh, this is what it looks like behind the scenes. Oh, so it just automatically put this vision in our head that shit was going to be sweet and that things were going to be peaches and cream, And which, I mean, we went 2-15. and 15, So obviously that turned out to not be true. So I would say for anyone who is, like, hype about the blueprint, um, I mean, it's still something good to see, but at the same time, Remember that these guys haven't put, they haven't played a game yet. They haven't put on actual pads and stuff yet. So keep that in mind. Um, this is a very different look than what it's going to look like during the season. So don't get too gassed up. Yeah, for sure. You? Yeah, no. No. I mean, just simply no. It, it hasn't changed my outlook on this season. Yeah. Unfortunately, I mean, <laughs> unfortunately, last year when they did it, they did it so well as far as, you know, highlighting the the new coaching staff, the all-star coaching staff, allegedly, that we put together. Um, and then, you know, highlighting some of the, the younger guys, highlighting the free agent signings and all of those type things. They did it so well last year, and I was one of the ones that fell victim to that. Um, got very, very gassed up just from that and then throughout training camp and everything like that. I will not allow myself to get to that point again. So all of this, like Tavian said, this shit is cute and it looks great and it looks fun and it looks like, you know, we're one big happy family right now, but it's June. He's been making bets already, so if y'all want some money, go see him. I mean, yeah, I have been making bets, but that's that was before I saw it. That was before I saw anything. 
That's just me looking at the schedule and looking at the fact that we have the fourth easiest schedule. Now, were we light last year? Absolutely. But I think with the improvements throughout the offensive line and the weapons, I think this offense will be a lot better. And if EJ is who we believe he is, I think that defense will be playable. I think it will compete. Hmm. That's I the, think middle of the pack will be uh, – I mean, you give me middle of the pack defense with an offense, you know, led by Bryce Young, former Heisman Trophy winner, former national champion. Give me that. Put him behind that O-line, and I think that we will be able to win six, seven, eight, nine ball games. I do. That's – I I, I – I worry about the defense, but I feel like we'll get into that conversation later. We will. When we touch on some of those injuries. For sure. For but, sure. Uh, I guess we can talk about the, um, you know, because the blueprint took place, what, over the course of the draft and, like, the very beginning of OTAs? Yeah, th- right? it was kind of like the beginning. Yeah, yeah, kind of throughout the, the beginning of Canales being brought in and then, like you said, kind of throughout OTAs as well. They didn't really show much on the draft, actually, which I was surprised about, but I'm sure they'll dive into that next episode. Well, they don't want to look like oh, – yeah, actually, yeah, they probably will. I was about to say they don't want to look like jackasses again, how they did last year when they get, gave that look into the war room. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. And we got Nicole picking up the phone. Right. <laughs> cool. 